There we go. Now we're real. <laughs> I'll leave this up here, and this will also be on the, the PowerPoint as well. You say this is for future reference? So do we need to study this? Well, it just uh, puts everything into nice categories for you. So, yeah, we we'll just look at these. And we're going to go into breast cancer next, I think. So, so learning and working as a nurse are gonna be pretty similar. So once you're graduated and you're working as a, an RN, the education continues for pretty much ever. So you'll look like this both times. But more freedom when you graduate. All right, breast cancer. All right, so a few risk factors. Generally age, sometimes it could be earlier, female. I believe males can have breast cancer, but it's like 0 0.1 or 0 0.01 or something like that percent. So very uncommon. And guys with gynecomastia, so a lot of breast tissue, have a small risk. Out of green or drainage in the arms, our arm and the breast cancer patients. Uh, symptoms to know and remember swelling, yes. Yes. pain, not being able to move around, skin uh, changes, and there's an increased risk of infection. For post chemotherapy, you don't want to know about chemo brain or chemo bot. Some symptoms are difficulty concentrating, uh, memory problems, confusion, and here's process or yeah, processing speed is slower. So keep that one in mind. Some breast screening recommendations and um, guidelines vary, uh, but generally screen 40 to 50 years of age. Um, higher risk women, if they've had breast cancer in their mother or grandmother, uh, screening would probably be earlier. And maybe additional imaging and modalities. Um, <laughs> and self examination that can be done relatively often. And I don't know if I have it on any of the slides, but as a side note, do you feel any lumps in their uniform? and not uh, asymmetrical, then still let your provider know. If you feel something that's painful and um, asymmetrical and just feels misshaped, then definitely get in and get that checked out. Some nursing interventions, uh, promoting wound healing, preventing complications. Some interventions, um, Wound care monitoring for infection or lymphedema. I'll let you read the rest of this. Okay. And I didn't asterisk this bottom part, but know this as well. Uh, for optimal circulation, um, and I believe this is after surgery, um, have the patient keep their affected arm elevated above the shoulder level to promote drainage and circulation. So make note of that. Lung cancer. The two types that I want you to remember are carcinoma and small cell lung carcinoma. Then know the differences, uh, not small cell. Um, they're the most common. Um, includes adenocarcinoma, squamous cell, and large cell carcinoma. Small cell is highly aggressive, um, originates in the bronchi, 
and grows rapidly and metastasizes to other body parts early. And some common symptoms, uh, persistent cough, shortness of the breath, could be chest pain, being tired, fatigued, <laughs> an intentional weight loss, and that usually comes a little bit later, a recurrent respiratory infection. Some risk factors, I think the biggest one we all know is smoking. But that's the leading cause. Um, and risk increases with duration and intensity. The risk factors go down shortly after somebody quits smoking. Uh, secondary would be occupational or asbestos, radon, arsenic. Um, we talked about a couple of prevention strategies. Um, at least three, the top one would be the biggest one. Diagnosis. Um, X-ray can initially find some lung cancer. The biggest one is the bronchoscopy with uh, biopsy. So they'll do an, an X-ray first, just to kind of tell where it's at. And they'll do a bronchoscopy with biopsy to tell what kind of cancer it is, or what kind of lung cancer. Um, a bit familiar with the DNM system, and I believe I have a slide with that in it somewhere. Um, surgical interventions, uh, lobectomy, so know what that is, uh, segmentectomy and wedge resection. So know the differences between these three surgical interventions. Um, chemo radiation therapy and targeted therapy. Um, chemo with platinum based regimens. Uh, not too familiar with chemo, but radiation uh, for locally advanced disease, targeted therapy, and immunotherapy. I think that's one of the newer therapies out. And this kind of breaks it down a little bit for future reference. We'll see this later. Leukemia. So there are four types that we're going to discuss, and I think those were in my recorded lecture as well. Uh, the big thing to know about these are patient populations, like the, um, and how fast they kind of blow up. Um, acute myeloid leukemia, rapidly progressive cancer of myeloid blood, blood cells. Uh, most common in older adults, so know that. Acute lymphoblastic leukemia, most common in children and can affect adults as well. So know the differences between those. The chronics are a little bit slower to progress. Um, and I was going to look up the Philadelphia chromosome, but I did, so looked that up later. Um, and chronic lymphatic leukemia also affects older adults. So the biggest takeaways of this, ALL, children, um, AML, and CLL, older adults, and then CML, look up Philadelphia chromosome. <laughs> Symptoms. And I think you can probably see a pattern here for all of these. The weakness are the biggest ones. CLL, uh, enlarged limb nodes, often painless. Enlarged, supposed to be liver. Or spleen. Um, so the biggest takeaway is knowing the main symptoms of these, which are fatigue, weakness, um, fever. CML has night sweats as well and is associated with bone pain, frequent infection. A nursing assessment. General uh, complications are infection, bleeding, and anemia. Yeah, anemia from 
probably from the bleeding, and neutropenia and thrombocytopenia. So low neutrophils and low platelets. So that's where part of the bleeding is. Tumor lysis syndrome. So not that that's going to be on the test, but look that up just for your reference. Uh, chemotherapy, administer chemo, manage side effects, and monitor treatment response. Some lifestyle modifications, balanced diet and hydration, rest, and infection avoidance. And if I recall correctly, uh, leukemia patients have a reverse isolation in the hospital. So um, that we don't bring any infectious colds or anything in. <laughs> like most cancers. And apparently I didn't fill in the potential side effects and complications. That must not have been that big of a deal. Alrighty. And then I have two slides of this information. And you'll be able to look at that later as well. This also gives uh, different patient populations in it. So use that for your reference. Same thing with this one. Like we're on to the next cancer. This is for emergency nurses. Differences between what our friends think we do, what my parents think we do, what society thinks, what my boss thinks. Not sure what they're doing all resting what I think I do and then what we actually do all right colorectal cancer so a couple of big things to know uh, prevention and screening so I have that memorized and uh, the risk factors that's mostly adenocarcinomas, um, they originate from polyps, uh, primarily in the rectum and sigmoid colon, but they can affect any part of the colon. Um, cancer cells can spread locally and metastasize to lymph nodes or distant organs. You don't really need to know the incidence, but I threw it in here anyway. Uh, prevention and screening. Um, then one of the newer guidelines is starting at age 45, unless you have um, family history or any other risk factors. So know that colonoscopies every 10 years is recommended, yearly fecal test, and stool DNA test. So know those well. Clinical manifestations, uh, rectal bleeding, and change in bowel habits and that could look like a pencil-sized stool because the tumors are pushing in on the inside the uh, colon. Um, treatments involve anemia correction and surgical resection with the colostomy. Diagnostic tests, sigmoidoscopy and colonoscopy for detection. Uh, NM staging and radiologic exams. The colonoscopy is the, probably the biggest tool we have to, or the doctors have, uh, to find cancer and biopsy. Surgery and uh, colostomy. Surgical resection and colostomy creation are primary treatments. And it kind of depends on the, the tumor location and extent. Pharmacological, um, five for a cell. So no, that option. Uh, not really about certain medications, but let's and read up on the nursing. Prostate cancer, and this happens in men not women. Um, first, 
um, to the prostate capsule. Metastasis is common uh, through the lymphatic and venous channels. Age is the greatest risk factor, along with African American men are at higher risk. Now, some genetic mutations and lifestyle factors like diet and obesity contribute. Some screening recommendations um, know these. Um, initiate discussions at age 50 for average risk men. Um, high risk, like African American men, or if there's a family history of this, uh, 45 or age 45 would be good. Consider testing at age 40. Well, let me go back. Discuss testing at 45 for higher risk individuals. Consider testing at age 40 uh, for those even higher risk, which includes family history. So <clears throat> the stations um, kind of vary, um, but the biggest ones are urinary symptoms and pain from bone metastasis. So that's one of the most common metastasis is to the bone. So know that one. The treatment options are surgery, radiation, chemotherapy, and hormone therapy. And one of the bigger surgical interventions is the TERP, transurethral resection of the prostate. I don't know if anybody's ever seen anybody with a three-way Foley catheter, but Afterwards, there's a lot of a decent amount of bleeding, but they want to flush out, and a bunch of fluid goes into the bladder and then comes out. So, know that one. Uh, biopsy is indicated for suspic suspicious lesions. Uh, so border irregularity is the key characteristic observed during the exam, and the exams are uh, digital in the rectum to appeal the prostate. Regular medical checkups every three months for the first two years post-surgical is crucial for follow-up care. So memorize this. It's going to be important to be able to let our patients know. Skin cancer. So we know that damage from UV, uh, radiation and chemicals are the leading cause of cancer, skin cancer. Malignant melanomas account for 1%, but they're the most deadly. Uh, Non-melanoma skin cancer includes basal cell cancer and squamous cell. I put this up here for your information for later. Some of the big things you want to know, a, a melanoma typically larger than six millimeters in diameter, asymmetric, and may develop into existing EVI, which I should have looked that up, but I didn't. And some more stuff here. And the biggest prevention, um, avoid for long exposure to sun and tanning beds and using broad spectrum sunscreen or protective clothing. So differences between melanoma and basal cell. The melanoma um, is, arises from the mel melanocytes, um, pigment producing cells. Less common, but more aggressive than basal cell carcinoma. Often appears as irregular shaped moles with asymmetry, so they don't look the same in either here when you're looking at them. Irregular borders, very colors, and a diameter larger than six millimeters. Can metastasize quickly if not detected early. The risk factors sun, family history, fair skin, and multiple moles. Basal cell is the most common type. Um, they look uh, pearly and waxy bumps, um, often develop in areas exposed to sun. 
and rarely metastasize, but can be locally invasive. So they can go relatively deep. Squamous cell. Um, this is from the squamous cells of the epidermis. It typically presents as firm red nodules or flat lesions with scaly crusted surface. So know the differences between these three. Can metastasize if left untreated. So if it's noticed early, it can be treated and uh, typically won't metastasize if it's caught early. And again, associated with chronic skin exposure and UV radiation. So I have about four or five of these. Uh, know the superficial spreading melanoma, the most common type. And pay particular attention to what they look like. So what you're going to be seeing on somebody's skin. Um, let to go uh, melanoma. Let me move this up a little bit. Um, whereas in older individuals with hit, history of chronic sun exposure that rises from let it go maligna uh, presents irregular pigmented macules or patches that slowly enlarge over time. Nodular melanomas. These are about 10 or 15% of melanomas. Raised, firm, often symmetrical no nodules with uniform coloration. So they look a little bit different than some of the others. I uh, can rapidly progress and metastasize. And then Necrol uh, melanoma. Yeah. Uh, most common type of melanoma in people with darker skin tones. Um, occurs in the palms, soles, and beneath the nails. Um, these are irregular shaped uh, pigmented lesions that often resemble bruises or dark streaks. And a couple more. Rare type of melanoma um, can occur in the mouth, nasal passages, genitals, and anus, often diagnosed as more advanced stage due to early recognition. Actinic keratosis. I actually said that right. These are precancerous lesions um, caused by prolonged UV, UV radiation like almost all of them, uh, presents with rough scaly patches or lesions on sun exposed areas. Maybe may vary in color from red to brown and can feel tender and itchy. If these are left and treated, uh, they can progress into squamous cell carcinoma. Etiology and risk factors, like we said, a few times, UV radiation, uh, <laughs> sun exposure, family history, and skin type. Um, the UV radiation a couple of times. Um, prevention strategies, and this one's asterisk as well. Um, instruct the patients to uh, sun as much as they can, at least on their skin or have protection. And protective clothing and regular skin checks. Avoid indoor tanning devices. I think this might be the last slide, but uh, there's a CDE assessment of the skin. And I can't recall if we uh, did this in lab last term or not. But so A is asymmetry. asymmetry. We want to check for irregular asymmetrical shapes, border irregularities, color variations, uh, diameter, so lesion size exceeds six millimeters. Uh, larger lesions may indicate increased risk, uh, but melanomas can be smaller. And evolution or elevation, changes in the lesion over time. That's kind of a telltale sign that might be cancerous. Uh, any new symptoms or change in existing mole or lesion? Okay. 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 
of the recording. Just go back to the beginning slides and follow through the flow so we can have the asterisk point for reference. Yeah. Oops. Now there we go. I'll move to the beginning. Unless these are the same as the PowerPoint that you've already uploaded. Yeah. This will be the same. All right. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm gonna upload this whole PowerPoint afterwards and the recording. It, the recording just won't have the first part of it. I was worried about the first part, but if you're gonna upload the PowerPoint yeah. Yeah. perfect. What makes it easy if you watch it later? Yeah. Like we have 10 minutes, and I think it'll take about 10 minutes to do the med dose calc. You guys are cool with that. So I can't let you go early, or I might get beat. So let's do that. And that way, after your test next Friday, you won't have to listen to me talk if you choose to, because it's optional. Um, I think we can cover it in about 10 minutes. Are you going to stop the recording and then make a new one of the. Uh... Yeah. Oh, let's zoom, actually.